Hi, Helen. Welcome to Beast Talk. That's my great pleasure having you with me today. How are you? Thanks a lot, Massimiliano. It's great. I'm doing, doing well. I hope you are too. All good here. Yeah. Thank you. So let's talk about, you know, give some flower for yourself, your background. Sure. Okay, so um, basically I've been uh, an entrepreneur in uh, digital since I started my career back in uh, 96, uh, working in the dot-com industry um, with uh, both startups and uh, market leaders. Uh, so in um, 2005, I came into the gaming industry and um, I worked for a company that was number two in the States uh, when it came to online poker, a Swedish company. That was later acquired by B Win, which was like a market leader in sports betting here in, in, in Germany and Central Europe. And then, um, yeah, so we ran that company, and it was like when online poker was really big, and we sort of led the, the sort of craze in Europe. Uh, and I was responsible for for marketing of this poker around France, Russia, Germany, uh, places like that, uh, and the states and uh, the UK too. But uh, the, the same, yeah. So, uh, and uh, then I um, founded my own company together with uh, the founder of this uh, big poker company. And we had, I was like the founder and CEO, and then we brought on a lot of people and we had um, business uh, all over, uh, all over the world, actually. So I, I'm sort of, I know what it takes to uh, scale up uh, businesses, um, you know, worldwide um, and using all the digital channels uh, available and also the, the offline channels. Um, so, and, and um, what I could tell you also for, for the purpose of this project is that uh, I was sort of struggling with alcohol since, uh, since I was a teenager up till I was uh, in my thirties. Uh, tended to party, we grow up partying a lot. Uh, I'm happy that my kids <laughs> are doing the same thing, but that was sort of what we like to do. And, um, uh, I, I never could control it uh, uh, as good as I should. So it wasn't like I was drinking every day, but the, the weekend partying didn't really stop um, when I was, um, uh, as I got older. So then uh, I, I needed to find a solution to this. And uh, in uh, 2005, I, uh, I met other people that had sort of recovered from um, alcoholism. And uh, I'd never met uh, these kind of people before, but uh, since that day, it was the 23rd of May in 2005. I never had to drink again. And, and, and the, the key to this is that um, for the first time uh, in my life, I'd met people that had sort of uh, suffered and recovered from this thing. And now it's been over 16 years since that day. Uh, and I, I, I see this kind of thing uh, happening all the time. And I'm like a mentor to a lot of people. And I also have my mentor that I, that I, that I uh, you know, communicate a lot with. So this is really interesting. And over, over the course of this time, I've been thinking like, wow, this identification thing is just unbelievable how, how well it works. And um, then me and my an old colleague, we've been working together for 15 years, uh, have this idea that um, I, I think this would work in other areas as well. So basically that's uh, where it started. So maybe I shouldn't talk too much here. Um, we can lead it in later, but that's sort of like a, a background to, to the project, if you will. It's extremely, important. it's extremely important to, to know, have a good picture of the background and also because, you know, can give us the very understanding where the idea is coming from, okay? It's exactly. Extremely, extremely important. And that's, that's a huge topic, very concerning and worldwide. So, um, it is, it is, it is massive. Yeah. yeah. Everywhere there is this problem and it's a very concerning and also very life threatening problem. So I'm very happy you got this choice. And it, can we talk about your project, your venture? Yeah, so it's called uh, Angel Chat. And um, the way uh, that we came up with this concept is basically that um, um, my, my co-founder, Carolina, uh, we've been working together. She's been uh, in charge of communications, branding, talent management, where, whereas I've been the CEO responsible for sort of, uh, you know, the operations and marketing. So um, she, has, uh, she has dealt with ADHD. Uh, I mean, I would never guess that she has ADHD because it, uh, the symptoms or the, in women are very different to, to men. Um, and uh, anyways, we discussed, so... Um, given how much this type of identification helps she had also received the best help that she thought she got 
was when she talked to people that knew more about ADHD than herself. So that was better than like going to, you know, the, the, the healthcare um, industry or whatever, if you will, that is offered in Sweden and all over Europe. That was much better for her. And uh, so then, then we felt like, okay, this identification, perhaps we should try and see if that works for all kinds of mental health uh, or emotional, you know, challenges and stuff like that. So what we did was that we did a test uh, on Facebook. We had a prototype brand called Confider and we, we tested like marketing messages towards different demographics. Uh, and then it was very apparent that what people immediately, they go like, oh my God, are you going to start this? This is amazing. This is like, this, this would mean so much to me. Uh, and uh, so we felt that, oh, we're on to something here. And then we did, you know, we did deep interviews. We did a lot of um, surveys and stuff like that. And, and what we landed in was that this is going to be great for women um, because they find it natural to sort of, if they have, you know, overcome something, uh, dealt with a difficult challenge, they find it natural to sort of help uh, their fellow sisters, you know, who are suffering or dealing with it now. Whereas men are not really the same. Men go like, if I've dealt with it, why should I help someone else? Uh, I mean, I, I managed to deal with it. I'm not interested in helping anyone else. And also men, it turned out, they, they were very skeptical as to why would I talk to someone? What's in it for that other guy? Why would he talk to me? Like, why would I talk to somebody anonymously? Whereas women, they went like, oh, this is beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, I just want to share, you know, my things, my stories with, with somebody. So we felt like, okay, we're not going to be stupid here. So let's just focus on women entirely here. Because first of all, it's easier to reach them. We, we don't want to, we want to go with the flow, so to speak, instead of making it difficult for ourselves. Of course. I mean, yes, I mean, men, we are. We, are, we try to hide. We don't try to talk too much. And we don't share that much like women do. That's true. That's completely true. So that it, yours has been the right choice to go. Yeah, yeah, we think so. Yeah, please, uh, if we can talk more, I mean, more talk about uh, which kind, for example, technology we have been adopting and, and what's your business model, how does it work? Yeah, so uh, what we did was that we, we, we felt like obviously the perfect format for this is, is uh, in an app. I mean, uh, adoption of apps, uh, that is growing uh, a lot. And uh, it's very natural to sort of uh, be anonymous in an app. So we decided, okay, what is important here is that we really match people that share the exact same experiences and profiles. So we uh, went to speak to, I mean, we, I have a lot of connections in the tech industry. So we went to speak to some top, uh, very skilled uh, tech people about how to build this uh, because we wanted to build our proprietary matching algorithm. And we decided how to do that, uh, what sort of, you know, what uh, uh, programming languages and stuff like that and databases uh, to use. So we built our own algorithm. Uh, first, it was based on four verticals, um, which we thought made sense. But then after like three or four iterations of the app with a lot of customer feedback, we realized that that was uh, not the case because many of these uh, women, uh, they have they, they suffer from, you know, multiple things like anxiety, stress, maybe PTSD, maybe self-harm and maybe loneliness and, or maybe they have like an alcoholic father or something like that. So uh, instead of just matching on, on one, we, we now match on, on everything. So um, the important thing for us was that it, it, it's supposed to be 100% anonymous. And that is the reason we felt was like, you know, in social media, we know now from reports from Facebook and other, uh, you know, reports that it's kind of toxic uh, in this demographic. Young women, uh, they are not automatically happier just because they have, you know, they're available on Instagram and Facebook and Snapchat. So we felt like on these social media platforms, it's important for, for people to create some sort of facade or, you know, to portray their lives as being, you know, fabulous. Whereas here, you know, there's not going to be anything, any need for that at all. This is supposed to be, you know, totally prestigeless and anonymous. So this anonymity, anonymity is really, really important. And we, we know now also that it's super appreciated by, uh, by our users. Um, and it also had to be uh, obviously safe. So what we have is that we have 
we monitor uh, the users that come onto the platform, um, first we, we thought that it's going to be very kind of difficult to find uh, those who will provide help, offer help to the others. Uh, so we had sort of lined up with a lot of people that we knew or whatever. But what happened was that we saw that as, as the traffic started come in, the user base started building, like 40% of the users wanted to provide help. So this is what I knew also, that it's, and that it's actually, you might get more benefit out of helping somebody than actually you know, asking for help. So this was very clear. So, uh, and it's been like that all along now. So we, we, we did mark, we, we raised money in uh, three times, uh, four times maybe. So the first time was just to build the MVP uh, and we launched that in after you know six seven months in January, 2020, um, and then uh, we raised some more money there, uh, 100k, uh, to sort of expand marketing. Uh, so we got it up to 10,000 users, not simultaneously or anything, but you know we had hundreds of users a day, and then we got a lot of feedback that this and that doesn't work. So over the summer we did a big ux analysis we brought in a lot of uh, interesting facts we built personas and stuff like that and then we uh raised some more money and then we scaled it up even more so we got we have had like how about sixty thousand app installs and we peaked at sort of ten thousand monthly users and uh, one over one thousand per day as well and um obviously we've been getting incredible feedback um and it's been we've Actually, one of the campaigns that we ran was like the best campaign on Snapchat in Sweden that year. We had over 5,000 app installs for a cost of uh, 0.82 euros per install. And the benchmark is like, uh, I think the benchmark was like 22, two to five. It's like way, way, way more. Um, so it, it was in, uh, incredible results. Uh, which is which is uh, very very nice. So here you can see like the the proof that we have of the concept. Um, uh, we now have four point three rating in the Swedish App Store. We've only marketed towards iOS women on iOS in Sweden. So the biggest um, audience is between eighteen and twenty nine years old. Uh, but we do we run from sort of sixteen to thirty nine, and we also have older people so there's really no reason why everybody could be on this uh, uh, I mean I've, I, for example you yeah so that yeah uh, did that answer your question or yeah absolutely I mean, uh, we all know you know in somehow and one day you need to start making some money okay to make your business going how does it work your business model okay so Coming from the gaming industry, we know that the people that are making the most money in the value chain in the gaming industry, that is actually the affiliates. Uh, and affiliates, what, what do they do? When an operator in the gaming industry, they have, you know, they have to develop uh, the games, uh, the, fin the fintech, uh, the people, the marketing, uh, the support, the CRM, VIP management, everything. Whereas the affiliate, the only thing they do is like they send leads because they're better at identifying and locating potential customers to the operator. So what we see, we're going to have a lot of people come into our platform. Uh, we're going to have a free version. And on there, we're going to make money on ads. Uh, you know, very restricted. We're not going to show, you know, commercial for alcohol or CBD or anything like that. It's going to be very sound and nice and then we also have a uh, kind of a, a different approach to the subscription model is more of like support our mission and you know help us develop uh, and uh, evolve angel chat so that we can offer it to as many people as possible around the world so that if you want to participate um, you can support us by you know by your an optional amount if you will uh, and you can be like a, a single uh, supporter or you can be a monthly or yearly supporter. So it, it's kind of like a subscription, but then again, not. Uh, but what we, what we see also is that um, with this user base that we're building, we're going to be able to send um, lead referrals to like uh, mental health centers, to various types of, you know, mental products for mental well-being, like, for example, like weighted covers uh, we're going to be able to send them to you know to maybe rehab uh, hotlines stuff like that 
which in the US, you know, pays a lot of money, actually. So you can make just by sending uh, somebody for a call to one of these rehab lines, you can get, you know, 60 bucks straight off. If you manage to, you know, send a sign up to one of the rehabs, you can get, you know, 500 bucks and, and stuff like that. So we believe there's enormous potential in the uh, affiliate lead referral angle here. Um, and the e com I mean, we, 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 we could also bring in, you know, and brand our own product uh, as we grow a, a little bigger and uh, have them uh, available on, on the site uh, and within the app. So that is, that is the business model that we, uh, as we see it today. What about seeing the health affiliates, for example, healthcare system, national healthcare system? You say uh, you can work also with the national healthcare system, okay, like NHS in UK, and in Europe is well established, right? And can you work with them? Can you have them like, for example, affiliates? It, they can use your application to help so many people have this problem. I mean, we, we, we definitely could because, you know, as it is, let's say Sweden is probably one of the best countries in the world when it comes to um, the welfare system. You know, what, what is on offer here when it comes to the availability of uh, therapists or whatever help for youth and stuff like that. But, you know, still, it's unbelievable what we hear that, uh, you know, young people or whatever, people who suffer from these things, they don't get help at all. And from what we see, I mean, I've seen in many of our reviews, we've actually, they, they say, they write and they say totally honestly that shit, you know, I didn't receive any help. I went here and there, couldn't get any help came to angel chat and now I'm happy you've saved my life you know it's on that level so these these people if they can just get somebody that they can talk to and rely to you know in, in a trusted and ni nice manner you know they get all the help they need so yes for sure if we're able to sort of uh, explain to the healthcare providers exactly what this means and how how, how important it is I, I, there's definitely uh, an opportunity to work with them we have made some contacts and everything. And then they go like, oh, you're a for-profit. Uh, we only work with um, sort of uh, charities or whatever, stuff like that. But that's in Sweden. So I think there's enormous potential. I mean, this could be offer, offered anywhere. I mean, I mean, honestly, even if you are for-profit, doesn't doesn't make any sense that they, they can't work with you because they can save a lot of taxpayers' money because you're giving help to the public in a private way. And, and also they can help the community. So they can only have upsides. They don't have any downsides. I, mean, I understand how complicated it can be working with the public sector. It is very complicated. And it's still very old fashioned everywhere. Even UK where NHS is very strong, but and they, they start opening anyway to pride. They start opening endorsing applications, which is very good. And I think this should be a way that at least all Europe should start thinking about. I mean, sure. can, can we talk about your range? 19, if I understood well, up to 29. I, mean, I, I know a lot of friends. Yes, also some unfortunate, some friend of mine, but I know a lot of people who unfortunately struggling a lot, even 50, 60. Yeah. So, yeah, so there's, there's absolutely no reason why we should limit it to like an age range or anything. But uh, the way we see when we have been running uh, campaigns uh, on social media or native advertising, I mean, they're picked up mainly by this group, maybe because they're, you know, active in the digital world, maybe more than um, an older, old, slightly older people um, could be. Um, but, uh, for us, I mean, we, we, we could see it as, yes, by all means, you know, loneliness is a huge problem among people that have retired, for example. Yeah. So, I mean, retired people, they could really benefit from this. Yeah. Uh, and also, I mean, there, there's, there's like, uh, yeah, you, you, could, you could make use of this in any way. I mean, I, I spoke to, for example, a, a CEO who was fired and I told him about this and he goes like, well, you know what? I would love to speak to other CEOs that have been fired because it's like I don't have I don't have anyone to talk to about this. You know what I mean? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, the point is, your is mental, mental health and health application. So it's not all about alcoholism, it's about everything that, you know, gets affecting our mental, mental uh, stage and mental health. And you, this can happen from everything. Yeah. And, and of course, the more you age, uh, the worse can be. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it, that, that's the thing. So I should tell you that uh, initially we thought addiction was going to be pretty high up, but what, what it's used mainly for is uh, anxiety, loneliness, yeah. stress, self-harm, and uh, yeah, ADHD is very big, ADHD and autism and this kind of uh, cognitive diagnosis. So addiction is not uh, as high up uh, as we thought in the, um, in the areas that they, they seek and provide help in. Yeah, anxiety probably now is the biggest problem for the society. We rush and we rush too much and we can't catch up with everything. And this is why anxiety comes, performance, everything is just why not only in startup, but everywhere. For sure, <laughs> in a, for sure. The new world, right? We go too fast and technology is the good and bad or new life. It's very good, but it makes people so anxious. And because you wake up in the morning, you watch your phone, you go to sleep, you watch your phone, and you want to catch up with everything, but it's just too much overwhelming. And this is why we get so anxiety is so high now. And You're right. Yeah, exactly. You can give a big, big help when it comes to you know helping people struggling. And there are too many. And honestly, many of them they hide. They're not going I to tell that too. So now it, Going back to um, be anonymous, uh, what about be real, which means hi, are you going to be concerned about authenticity? Yeah, so this is, this is actually, I'm glad you bring that up. That's very important uh, because we've um, all along, we've seen that, okay, we're a little bit reluctant. We've been a little bit reluctant to go mass market because now we've focused on these younger women because we realized that there are predators among men. Um, so we felt like, you know, we don't want to get any men here with the dubious uh, uh, agendas. Uh, so the way we have authenticated the users uh, to date is that we have used, you know, Facebook, uh, Apple or Google. And then um, we've had our team uh, do, you know, manual background checks, uh, which has been extremely tedious. But now, uh, I think on, if the tech guys um, stick to their promise, uh, we're going to launch this new authentication uh, feature uh, that is going to go live on Monday. And uh, with that, uh, what we do is that we, we, um, we, we authenticate each user that is going to provide help. Uh, and then they get a trust badge on their profile to see that they've been verified. And then the, 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 the people who are seeking help, they can be certain that this person has been uh, vetted and authenticated when it comes to gender and, uh, and uh, age. So um, this is done in, in a way we're using uh, mobile bank ID, which is very big here in Scandinavia. And for other, for other markets, we're using um, a combination of a unique uh, app token, uh, a selfie and an ID. So with that, uh, we're gonna, you know, verify each and authenticate each user account. So th after that, we believe we're ready for mass market. I mean, I think face recognition can help you. Yeah, I do believe so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't need to show who you are, but in any way, you need to understand who they are. Make sure the predators, as you said, there are too many. Because my concern would be. I'm a woman, well, actually, I don't know who is on the other side. It can be a man. It can be a man with not that clear, <laughs> clear mind that I need help and not a predator. There are too many, simply too many. True. And so I've, been, I've been talking to guys uh, in Israel. Uh, they do something similar, of course, for uh, kids. And again, mm, it's, very, it's very complicated and to you know make sure that everything runs smoothly and you can avoid these predators coming it is for sure they're always there uh, but 
I'm pretty sure technology can help you now and help you very much. Uh, in terms of KPIs, how's it going? Yeah, so right now what we've, we've been focusing on building out these uh, improving, enhancing the UX, enhancing the monetization features and uh, enhancing the security. So that's what we've been working on the late the last months. So we haven't focused that much on marketing. Um, but in terms of marketing, I, I was in touch with uh, you know the country manager for Snapchat a while ago, and it's still you know our um, our uh, cost per install and you know CPC and everything is uh, very favorable, uh, and we have around um, we have around fifty thousand messages sent in app uh, per month, um, with about you know two thousand two thousand five hundred users, and maybe on, on daily basis of like two hundred two to three hundred users. So that's sort of level where we are with hardly any marketing at all. We spend about 2,000 uh, euros a month right now on marketing. And we're getting some more money in uh, to the company here now, uh, 60,000 uh, uh, this week. And then we're going to be able to spend a little bit more marketing. But the, the plan is then to, to have a bigger round uh, where we can really, you know, start expanding and, um, you know, really validating the entire um, business model before we, you know, go totally global. Are you actively fundraising now? Yes, uh, we are fundraising. Uh, I'm part of uh, New Chip Ventures uh, Accelerator, uh, so we're in. I'm in their seed program, uh, and the ambition is to. I joined in August, so it's a six month uh, program, and the intention is to actually raise around two million, two and a half million. Uh, euros um, by uh, yeah hopefully by december uh, but hopefully even even earlier than that but the program is six months so it, it might be that we, we take a little there and a little bit here so it's not necessarily so that we're able to raise the entire amount straight off the bat and how is going to be the use of the funds and if we can cover it with your scale up uh, strategy Yes, so we believe, uh, I mean, the, the way we have planned it is to raise two and a half million. With that money, we're going to, uh, you know, grow the team. Uh, we have a very, very small team right now, and we're going to do marketing. Uh, the thing is that, as it turns out, I mean, we have a lot of connections, you know, in the space. So it could be that we have uh, a lot of the marketing um, already covered uh, from a revenue share deal. Uh, which means we don't have to spend anywhere near uh, that money. But uh, we want to raise that money so that we have the opportunity to really accelerate uh, when we see that everything works. You know, So with the use of funds, we're going to build the operational team, validate the business model, follow through on UX optimization, which is obviously an endless um, improvement op opportunity. And the way we've seen what our marketing or the go to market strategy is that we use uh, influencers, they could be micro or bigger influencers. We use them on their platforms, they record a small video of their greatest challenge and how they dealt with it. We use that video uh, to sort of promote angel chat on our own channels and also uh, in, in social media. So that's a concept that uh, we know it works, you know, very well, it converts well. So we want to find like one big celebrity. Uh, in the U.S., sort of a global celebrity to work with, and on top of that, we're going to use uh, um, uh, you know multiple micro influencers, uh, and even even our own users are going to produce you know videos of uh, of you know challenges that they have overcome. So that's sort of that's sort of the entire how we're going to use the funds and the go to market strategy. I mean, the video, I think, can really help. Yeah. Yeah, and of course, video can, can show people, but, you know, experience or something, uh, I mean, can show people that, of course, had a problem, but, you know, experience, how experience, how to tackle it and how to sort it out, you know, it's very hard to heal. It's very, very important, I do believe. We like to watch video more than reading, right? It's more straightforward. It is like a, an image says more than a thousand words, and a video <laughs> says more than a thousand images. I guess I do believe so. I mean, uh, as a founder, what's your vision? Uh, how do you visualize your company in five years' time? 
Yeah. So, so knowing what I know from these 16 years of dealing with this kind of, uh, you know, pure identification mentorship, I know that if we are able to scale this up, this is going to be like one of the biggest apps out there because there's such a need for this and people love it. And we're just going to make sure that everything works fine and there's a smooth ride and that it's, you know, a great place to be, uh, that we have the best environment for, you know, discussing these kind of things. And that's what we're working on. So we believe that it's going to be like the go-to place for people seeking to improve their mental well-being. And we'd like to see it as we're offering like a mental wealth, you know, because millions of people, if millions of people are using this, you know, their, their sort of experiences are going to be a, a wealth accumulated by all, by all these people all their lives. It's going to be available to anyone right there in the app. So with that, I mean, it, it's just unreal if you start thinking about it, how big it can be. And um, what we see like in, in five years time is that um, ideally maybe we do an IPO um, because we're taking it and if we've been able to monetize and, you know, uh, show uh, excellent KPIs and growth, uh, then an IPO seems like a good option. Uh, it could also be a case where we join forces uh, with a bigger player, like, uh, you know, what have you, you have Match, uh, which is which owns Tinder, uh, maybe Facebook uh, would like to acquire, uh, have this kind of anonymous arm as well. Tencent, the Chinese, uh, you know, giant. Also health companies like Talkspace um, that just uh, IPO'd in July. Um, their online therapy, you know, there's several online therapy uh, providers. They could potentially um, do a JV or acquire. And then there's the tech giants that could also be potential partners. So ideally, we would grow this all the way ourselves with an IPO. But uh, I mean, we also have to be humble for the fact that other people have come further and <laughs> might contribute a lot to the business. So I mean, joining forces with one a company like this would be, you know, a good opportunity as well. Yes, I mean, mm, there's there is a different perspective. Okay? If I'm an investor, maybe I would like both IPO and be acquired, but I do also, and I wish to all the founders to IPO because be acquired and IPO for founder perspective is very different. And IPO probably the most rewarding thing you can do in your life, even you start a startup. But yes. again, you never know. And uh, joining forces and be acquired can also be a good not end. It's not going to be never end. It's a good step forward, okay, to grow the business inside or with another business. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, can we close with? A message, you know, why the investors should invest in your great venture because it's a CC great. Yeah, well, if the investors care about social impact, which I believe some do, then uh, this is everything that has to do with inclusion. There's a lot of people suffering out there. We're talking about 50% of all women 16 to 84 experience impaired mental well being. I mean, and we know. That's, that angel chat can help these people in a major way. So given that we also know how to monetize with the experience that we have from you know, digital gaming, we know that um, this is gonna be a, a smashing success. So we hope that uh, we can get some investors on board that uh, realize that this is the fact as well. <laughs> I'm sure you will, Jonan, I'm very sure. Thank you very much for coming to Beast Talk. It's been a very great pleasure and really my compliments because you're doing something great. Well, thanks for inviting me, Max. And thanks for having me. It was great. Good talking to you. The pleasure was mine. Thank you.